Everyone, thank you very much for tuning in for this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, this is an episode of Companies Respond, and what I have here is a response from Light Fighter in regards to the Catamount 2 tent, military tent, that I recently took out for a test night episode. If you saw that episode, then you know already that the tent, it failed miserably, right? There was a ton of water inside of that tent. There were many, many leaks. I counted at least five leaks, but I believe there to be more. The test night episode that I did with this tent featured very interesting weather conditions that changed rapidly and this is essentially what happened I set the tent up in the afternoon the following morning freezing rain began to fall and the freezing rain event lasted for roughly five hours and the tent featured no leaking at all at that point point. and that's because the tent was coated and about two tenths of an inch of ice later in the day the temperatures rose to roughly 35 degrees the ice began to melt and it was just plain rain that was falling. It was at this point in time that the tent began to leak. The rain wasn't heavy, but it was moderate at times. And I did not check on the tent until late that evening. And that's when I was going to stay the night in the tent and I was going to monitor it for ventilation, condensation, and moisture control. I walked up to the tent, I opened the fly, and I noticed that the walls were wet on both sides. I opened up the body, Looked inside, there was water all over the floor, my backpack was wet, there was a huge pool of water in the middle of my sleeping bag that had not yet absorbed. I looked around, there was water on the roof, there was water everywhere. I was wearing my headlamp to start with, I had a lantern, I turned that on, and I was going to clip that to the mesh top. And when I did so, water just dumped out all over the place. <laughs> It's funny because I wasn't actually paying attention. I was in the process of doing this while looking at water on the floor and I was a little bit surprised and just water just dumped out. It was at this point in time that I began investigating to see if I could figure out what the issue was. Now, I did not take the tent apart, but I did notice that in each of the corners, the connectors were wet. Now, the connectors, that's what I call them. Basically, that is the connection point between the tent body and the fly itself. This tent features a, there's many different names for this. Some people call it an all-in-one setup design. Some people call this a fly first. No matter what you call it, it basically translates to this. The body and the fly are connected and you can set up the tent together without the tent body being exposed to the conditions outside. For an example, you could set the tent up in a rainstorm and you don't have to worry about the body getting wet while doing so because you have the fly over the top of it and you're setting up the poles on the outside. It is those connection points that seem to have leaked. Every single one that I looked at was wet. I counted five, but there are many more. I'm sure that most of those, if not all of them, were leaking based upon the amount of water that was inside of that tent. Once I saw how badly the tent was leaking, I decided to bail because everything was soaking wet, including my sleeping bag. My sleeping bag was absolutely soaked through and through. There was a puddle on top of it. I mean, there was so much water that had already absorbed into it that I had to leave. Plus, it was a cold night. I would say it was around 35 degrees that evening, so it was too cold to be soaking wet and in inside of that tent. The next day, I contacted Light Fighter and I shared with them my experiences so far. And the way that the company responded blew my mind. I was extremely impressed with what appeared to be an all hands on deck event at the company. I began receiving emails from different heads at the company, all of which stated that the entire company was focusing their attention to this matter so that they could figure out what happened and fix it. One individual told me this. First off, everything in the warehouse and the production of this item has been halted completely. I have already pulled several samples from various timelines of manufacturing to make sure that we are covering the entire span of the project to have tested. I sent them some photos of the connection points and how they were wet and leaking and they responded with this. Thank you for the photos, very helpful. At first glance, it looks like the webbing is one continuous piece on both the rain fly and the inner tent. Again, this is just based on the photos. This should not be the case and it should be two separate pieces of webbing, each seam tape, to create a better water barrier. Based upon yours with the one piece of webbing, this essentially becomes a drinking straw for the fly. And that makes perfect sense, especially when you looked at how much water was just pouring into that tent. After additional research on their end, I received a following reply. After looking through our inventory, we have identified the issue. Bottom line up front, we have a product recall of the last production run of Catamounts in process as we speak. Similar to what I said below, we have pinpointed that there is an operational error as well as a material error. When using the same type style of webbing in a tent where the webbing goes between the two layers of fabric, there should always be a layer of separation to properly 
waterproof the fly. You wouldn't want them to overlap, which is what happened here. Now, if we had overlapped a piece of webbing and there's a strip of waterproof fabric attached to the O-ring to the rain fly itself, this would create a barrier that is needed for the water to stop, therefore eliminating the issue. Unfortunately, this did not happen and the same style of webbing was used. The recall will go into effect today online and all sales of the item have been frozen since the defects can hinder performance. And again, the way that this company has responded is unlike anything I've ever seen. I am incredibly impressed here. One thing that I would like to talk about took place in the test night episode when I was inside of the tent and I saw how much leaking was taking place. I mentioned this. This is without a doubt unacceptable in my opinion. Not only for any civilian like myself, but for our soldiers, this is not acceptable at all. For your money, you deserve better and our soldiers definitely do. From what I have seen, folks, this is a company that cares about our men and women out in the field and also their civilian customers. Their response to this matter has been incredible and should be an example for other companies to follow. From here, I send back the defective tent. I will await a replacement and I will begin again with my testing from square one. We'll put it through its paces. We will see how well it performs and we will do so together. I have high hopes for this tent. I love the design. I like the setup process. It's not perfect with the exterior poles, but this tent has has a lot going for it. And if it performs well, this will be an incredible bargain when it comes to four season tents. Now everyone, I wanna hear from you. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you all think about the Catamount 2 and the issues that I've had with this tent? What do you all think about Light Fighter's response? What I see here is a company that truly cares about their products, about our men and women out in the field, and to me, that means a lot. I have high hopes for this product and my agenda-free approach will continue. We will have additional test night episodes and more coming up in regards to this tent. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel, hit the like button, you know, subscribe, bell, all that stuff. You know what to do. Until next time, take care, strength and honor, be safe.